Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining my channel, welcome, welcome. My name is Cindy and we do a little bit of baking, budgeting, and beyond. I look like I've got a halo behind me, don't I? <laughs> I'm not an angel, I promise. That's just the ceiling light. Oh, we're gonna do something different tonight. Something that I've never, well, I, I've done it before, but let me tell you, I'm almost 60 years old and I'm sure I was a teenager when I did it, so. And that was with my mom or my granny. So we're gonna make an angel food cake from scratch. I have a customer that wants an angel food cake, so that's what we're gonna do tonight. So I'm, and I'm gonna use a recipe for sure on this one. So I'm gonna read off the ingredients, then I'm gonna gather my ingredients, and then we'll come back and we'll put it all together. Right now, I've got my oven ba uh, baking, my oven preheating at 375, and it calls for three fourths a cup of cake flour, which. I've got swans down. That's probably backwards for y'all. Cake flour. You can use all-purpose flour, but your texture is going to be a little bit different. This is going to give you a finer, smoother texture than flour would give you. It calls for one and three-fourths cup of sugar, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, one and a half cups of egg whites, which it can be 10 to 12. I have taken a full dozen of eggs and I have separated them and I have put my whites in one container and then I put my yolks in a just a plastic bowl with a lid and I just covered them with a little bit of water. That way when you need an egg yolk, you can just reach in there with your hands, clean hands of course, or a spoon and get you one out. It's probably easier with your hands the way they slip and slide around. One of the things your egg yolks would be good for is like a homemade pudding. Oh my goodness, some homemade chocolate pudding. Mmm, some creme brulee. Y'all, I love food. I can't help it. <laughs> but I digress. Anyway, back to the recipe. We need one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. Cream of tartar stabilizes your egg whites. And then we're gonna need one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, which I use double strength vanilla, so I'm gonna use three fourths of of a teaspoon. And then you'll also need an angel food pan. Now, you need a specific pan for angel food cake. Mine is an older one and the bottom comes out which makes it easier to get your cake out, but it's called a tube pan because of this tube here. And then it has these feet that allow you to turn it upside down because once we get through baking it, there's my halo. <laughs> once we get through baking it, we're gonna immediately take it out flip it upside down and it needs to cool upside down so it doesn't fall. Thought y'all might want to know how to separate eggs. I was taught to just crack your egg, split it in half, and then just take your egg yolk back and forth. And then there's also a way people do it in their hand, where they just pour the egg in their hand and do it that way. That always makes me nervous. <laughs> I'm afraid I will get some yolk in it. I guess if you're used to doing it that way, then that's how you do it. Now this is a handy dandy egg separator from Pampered Chef. And you just crack your egg and you drop it in it. And it separates the egg for you if you like gadgets. Half the time I forget I've got it and don't drag it out. To me it's just quicker seeing, to me the eggshell does the best. <laughs> But it is a tool you can use. There we go. So that's how you crack eggs. That's the three ways I know for not cracking, separate them. So that's the three ways I know. So I just wanted to show you all that. And remember, you don't want any of your yolk in your whites or they won't beat up right. And you also want to make sure you clean your container with either lemon juice or just white vinegar just to make sure there's no grease residue. See, I used a plastic container right then, and really you shouldn't use plastic, but I just grabbed it just to show y'all. So that is how you break or separate an egg.
first direction says combine half of the sugar, flour, and salt and sift it together five times. We've got one and a half cups of sugar, so we need, I'm just gonna move my bowl over here. We need about three fourths a cup of sugar. So I'm gonna take this cup and measure half of the salt. We've got a fourth of a teaspoon, so that'd be about an eighth of a teaspoon. And then our flour is three fourths of a cup. So I've got a half and a fourth. So there's a fourth. And then oh, about half of that. And I'm just gonna take, and I'm just gonna sift it on this parchment paper. And we'll do this five times. All right, so I've done that five times. So let's talk about the sugar. Most recipes for angel food cake say to use super fine sugar because otherwise it doesn't mix well, blend well with the egg whites because that's what the main ingredient of an angel food cake is, is egg whites. So what I did was I took my sugar and I put it in the little mini uh, blender, little food processor, and I pulsed it several times till it became fine. So right here we've got our half of our flour, half of our sugar, and half of our salt. So that's all sifted together. That's about what I got. So we're gonna put this in the mixer. So I'm just gonna whip these till they get frothy on low speed. And then when they get frothy, we're going to add the cream of tartar and the vanilla extract. See, it's just kind of frothy. It's like foam on a fountain drink. So here's my cream of tartar. Here's my vanilla extract. We're going to increase the speed to medium and continue whipping, adding the remaining sugar one tablespoon at a time. We've got our other sugar. We're gonna add one tablespoon at a time. Let it get good and incorporated. Sprinkle it in. Just sift half the sugar and all the flour. So I'm gonna take the rest of the flour and salt, and I'm gonna go ahead and stick it with the others. And I'm gonna stop this and show you. This isn't quite ready yet. It's still a little soupy. And I'm using my whipping attachment instead of my paddle attachment, which I always seem to call a blade, <laughs> but it's a paddle attachment. But I'm using the whipping attachment for this because it puts more air in the eggs. And after we get these to a stiff peak, we're going to mix our flour mixture in there, but we're going to fold it in, and we, we want to do that very gently because we want to keep all this air in the eggs that we're putting in. And that's what will make the cake light and fluffy. Like I say, you don't want to overbeat it. You just want to beat it till it comes to a stiff peak. So it's like some things are. You, you can't just walk away from it because it might happen quick. And we're going to bake this at 375 degrees for 28 to 30 minutes. They're real glossy looking. Yeah, that's a soft peak. Just stands up on its own, but not real firm. I'm whipping this for 21 minutes. So it takes almost as long to whip the egg whites as it does to bake the cake. All right, let's see where we're at now. It's hard to do that without taking the bow out. Yeah, see, see how it's just staying right there? We're gonna call that stiff.
see how I can do this without making a mess. Cause y'all know I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and sift it over this bowl too. Try to get it scattered out around. Okay. Like I said, we're gonna fold. We're gonna take it from the outside, bring it to the end. Outside, bring it to the end. Now what we're gonna do is put this in this pan. Now this is not a cake that you tap on the counter to get the air bubbles out of. This and pound cake, you don't do that. If you wanna keep your air in here. But after we get it in this pan, we're gonna take an offset spatula or you can use a knife, whatever you got. And we're going to run it through the batter a little bit because air pockets build up under this stuff. Run it through here a couple of times. But like I said, you can use a knife. Smooth it out a little bit. Okay, y'all, it's been 28 minutes and I checked it with my toothpick and it came out clean. Get it where you can see it. Now, I'm going to invert it. Remember, that's what these little feet are for. A lot of the newer pans don't have those feet, so you have to either invert it and put the tube on top of a bottle, like inside a Coke bottle or something, or over a Coke bottle, depending on what you can find. Or you can turn a bowl upside down and put it on that. But we're gonna let it cool completely, and then we're gonna take it out of the pan. <laughs> Came out on its own. Ain't that something? Well, <laughs> Can't be sending that out of here because in all actuality, you should have to take like a spatula or a knife and go around the edges. I have to start over. Okay, y'all. So now we know what happens if you don't cook it long enough because we cut into that one or I cut into that one and it was just a little doughy still. So I redid everything. You know, I'm gonna keep it real. I redid everything just like I did before except I cooked this one for 30 minutes instead of 28. And it didn't fall out of the pan, so that's good for the first thing. So, you're supposed to take a knife, or I'm taking an offset spatula, and just run it around the edge. Just to loosen it up. Y'all keep your fingers crossed. I gotta deliver this at nine o'clock. Oh, it loosened up. same thing under here and just hold it you can just you can just use a knife I just I'm just used to using these so I just grabbed one oh, ta-da yay we got a cake <laughs>